Hi greedy 3 dears. welcome to today's episode. Today I'm going to look at the pros and the cons of hollowing out your models, why we do it and what are the risks in doing it. So let's first of all look at why we do it. Okay, well the obvious reason we hollow out our models is we use less resin, which means it costs less to produce. Now at the moment resin is around about, you can get it if you're smart, for about £17 a kilogram. That's not too bad a price, but resin doesn't grow on trees and neither does your money. So you need to be as frugal as you can with your resin, don't waste it. So if we have a solid piece of resin, let's say that solid piece weighs 1000 grams of resin. That solid piece will have cost you 17 pounds to produce. If you can half or quarter the cost of that by hollowing it, then you're saving a packet. Every model you make, you will save money. Every part of that model you make, you will save money. Also, it won't be as heavy. And also, if you have a print failure that we all have, if you have to throw it in the bin, you're not throwing away as much money as you would have thrown away. So a solid piece, you're losing a whole lot. It's a waste of money. So let's look at hollowing it out. And I'll show you the process a little bit later on. But what are the benefits to hollowing? Well, obviously, you're using less resin. Whoopee you're saving some money, you're reducing the weight of it, and also by hollowing it out, if you make a mistake and you have to throw it in the bin, you're not throwing away as much resin. So those are the benefits. What are the risks? Okay, so a couple of risks in resin when you hollow them out. One would be that you may lose the integrity of the model. If you make the shell too thin, it would be like a proverbial eggshell and it may crumble and break. If you don't add drainage holes into it, then you're looking at some serious problems moving forward. Resin that's trapped inside a model can expand and your model, you may have seen it with your models, you may have seen it on YouTube. I've certainly got a video that talks about it in the Greedy3 library and I'll link to it to the end. You can find that they split open. They may split a week later, a month later, six months later usually in heat because resin will expand and when it expands it can break your model and ruin all that work you may also find another problem with it is when you put your holes in it and you've hollowed it and you've pitched your model together and you've painted it and it looks fantastic a week later you see a drip of resin that's coming out somewhere or other that you haven't quite sealed properly running down your model and that also can ruin it so there are inherent risks to hollowing but you can mitigate those risks and I'll talk to you about how I do it against printing that solid piece. Now, for little pieces like hands and feet and smaller parts, there's no point hollowing them, print them solid, job's a good one. Now, the other thing I wanna to say to you here is I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm not sitting here preaching to you saying, you must do this, you must do that. I will show you how I do it. Whether you follow what I do or not is entirely up to you. So please don't think I'm telling you how to do it. I'm showing you how I do it and why I do it that way. Stay tuned and we'll show you the process of how to hollow your model. I'm gonna be using the Wicked Cyclops bust and it is an amazing bust from Wicked Designs. And there'll be a link to their Patreon in the description. But as you can see, it's quite a large bust. So the first thing I'm gonna do is not gonna bother hollowing it. I'm just gonna go into my settings, add some supports to it and slice it. So you can see this is going to take a whopping 1,046 mils of solution and the weight will be 1,046 grams. Keep that figure in mind. And if we look at an average cost of the resin, the Sunlu at the moment being around about £17 a kilogram, you're looking at a cost of £17. So keep that in mind. A whole tub of resin, just over, and £17. Let's go back and let's hollow it. So sitting at the top of your two box, you will see here is the hollow function. Click it. Now this wall thickness here is the setting that I use. I'm not saying you've got to use that setting, but I like that setting. It has worked well for me. You do not want it too thin. If you have it too thin, you will lose the structural integrity of the piece. And if you have it too thick, you'll be using more resin than you need. I don't bother changing precision to anything other than zero. This will be how smooth the wall is. It's gonna be on the inside. You're not going to notice it. I do not use an infill structure, some people do. 
That again is your choice. If you use an infill structure, it will give you the option of do you want to put a grid in there? And you can put a grid in there, but I like to use supports. Hollowing process animation, you can turn that on or off. It will, It's not really important. It might just take a little bit longer for the animation to show you the whole process and make sure you're set to inner, not outer. And then start. The computer will grind its CPU and its graphics card and it will work out for you the prime hollowing of this model and it will show you a bit of a process there as you can see of it going down and you can see the process. Look at all the resin you're going to be saving, absolutely incredible. And there we go. Now, that model now, if we printed it just as it was, you would have a great big chasm on the inside that would be absolutely full of uncured resin. And that we do not want. If you did not hollow this out, and we'll come back to that, that uncured resin inside would expand, it would split your model, and it would ruin your model maybe a week, maybe a day, maybe six months after you've finished it. So we do need to hollow it out. And Chitubox gives us that ideal solution right there. Dig a hole. Now, what I like to do on a model like this size, I like to put some quite big holes in. And I like to go up to at least 10 millimeters. And the reason I like 10 millimeters is a little bit later on, I'm gonna be curing the inside of this model. And this will allow me to get my LED lights on the inside of it. Depth, I set that to six millimeters. You can change it, you can alter it. Again, I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just telling you what I do. And that means that the depth of the hole will be no greater than six millimeters, perpendicular to the model. Um, and I don't bother keeping the hole. If you click the keep the hole function, when it burrows it out, it will keep it as an extra file that you can then fill the hole with. I just don't bother with that. And I have dig hole continuously ticked and I select add a hole. I'll then find a place on the model where I want to add a hole. Hold it across there and just click the left mouse button. And there is a hole inside. And I'll add a few of these in and this will allow the drainage to happen. Now, if you try to click somewhere and it doesn't add a hole, then that means your hole is probably a little bit too big. So you just need to reduce the size of it. So if I want to put a hole there, will it work? <laughs> Typically, it has worked. Let's find somewhere else. But you can see there's plenty of holes in there for drainage. And if you want to put a couple more in, you can. It's absolutely fine. Don't overdo it, of course. You do, you do need a bit of structural integrity on the bottom of your model. But adding a few holes on the bigger surface areas will do no real damage at all. So let's find a smaller area and see if we can make the hole fail. So let's try there. No, nope, that's worked as well. Wonderful. Let's make the hole bigger just so I can show you the problem. So you may come across a click there and it's not going to do it. And that's because that hole is too big. If I reduce the size of the hole. Then the hole should work absolutely fine. So if you find you're getting that error where it's not digging a hole for you, it is because the hole is too big. And give it plenty of holes in the areas that you're not going to see. Obviously, you are not going to put a hole somewhere where well, you're not going to put a hole here and ruin the whole of your model or put one here and ruin the outer layer of it. You're just going to concentrate on the areas whereby you are not going to see those holes. Uh, I'd also put one on the top there. I might put a couple on the top there, actually. Look at our model this size. And now we know that those holes will drain the resin as we go through and you can see them going right through to the inside. And it's really important you add holes to your models. Now we're gonna go back to the slicing side of it, the sorry, the support side of it. And I'm gonna tell it to add all supports. Now my support settings are set 
uh, too heavy and they're set to 70% density. You do not need to copy me. This is just how I do it and it works every single time for me. Now those supports are on there. If we look on the inside of that model, you will see that it is also supported inside and the reason it is supported inside is you will have created chasms and you'll have created islands whereby if you don't support it it will not print again there are other ways of doing it but this is how i do it now i've got the supports done i'm going to go back to slice and i'm going to slice it now remember last time it took virtually a whole liter of resin at a cost of £17 and now we've hollowed it let's see what difference it makes well I think that says it all so now instead of a thousand mils of resin you're using literally just over a quarter of that which has obviously meant the cost now has gone from £17 to £4 or four euros or four dollars whatever your currency is 64 that's a massive massive saving and all you've done literally is taken all that resin out of the inside that you're not going to need you won't see it you've taken it away you've hollowed it and that will print absolutely fine and when you look at that model you won't see any difference to a solid model you'll feel it if you try to lift that model because now it's not going to weigh that ridiculous amount of weight that it did before it's not going to weigh a thousand grams it's only going to weigh a lot less and that means that everything else that you do if you do the arms the head the base in the same way you will save shed loads of resin so let's pop this on the printer Let's print it and let's look at the cleaning process and the final curing process that you must do if you hollow out your prints. Now I've printed this on my Saturn S and as you can see there I'm using my handles to lift it off to keep the case nice and clean. You see I learned and there it is on the build plate. Now I've cheated a little bit because I've reduced it in size just a tad and I put the head on as well but the same principle was involved in the hollowing out process of both the head and the body and as you can see it's printed absolutely perfectly with those settings that I suggested that you use and it has come off the build plate absolutely perfectly also I am really chuffed with how it's come off the build plate um, it just shows you that your settings are right when it prints come off this easy and they're printed well without having to batter them off here you can see me using a hairdryer just to heat the supports up just to get those supports off if they're a little bit difficult to come off soak them in warm water or a hairdryer will do that admirably for you there's the model now it's had all the supports removed you can see however that where the holes are some of the supports are poked through that's perfectly normal don't worry about it all you need to do is get yourself a pair of little clippers and we've all got a pair of them or two knocking around and just cut them off carefully around the holes we want to try to free these holes up as much as we can to allow a couple of things to allow the resin to escape and to allow the IPA to get in there so the other thing you can do is take a really small screwdriver poke it in the hole and you can hear me there just breaking around the supports to again open up those holes to allow the resin out and more importantly that IPA in there to give it a really good clean. Okay now putting it into the IPA and that's my dirty IPA wash first. I'm going to take a toothbrush and I'm giving it going to be a really good scrub. Concentrating firstly on the outside making sure that I get all the little nooks and crannies clean so I get that silvery film that you get sometimes if you haven't done it properly all the way off there. So give it a really good scrub all over using a little toothbrush which works absolutely marvellously and draining it out giving it a waggle and draining it out. Now the other thing I'm going to use is my fantastic syringe. I love my syringe. I'm going to load it up with some IPA, pop it in the hole and give it a squirt. This added pressure, this blast of IPA will help you clean the inner parts of your model that otherwise may not get IPA all over them. So load it up a few times, get, get into the hole and give it a really good squirt and pressurise clean the inside of your model with the syringe another great use for the syringe and I'll put a link to the video that I uh, suggested the syringe in the first place at the end of this video.
and exactly the same with the head toothbrush on the outside giving it a really good scrub and syringe in the holes that we've added exactly the same process squirting it in and getting all that nastiness out with some high pressure ipa squirtiness absolutely fab once that's done i've just popped it into a clean IPA wash and I'm going to give it a little bit of a scrub in there just to make sure I've given it the best clean that I can give it waggling it give it a shake emptying it in and out rubbing it with my toothbrush you get the picture making it as clean as you can and once that's done I'm just going to use some kitchen towel to dry it through give it a good old uh, rub all over now if you noticed I put the kitchen towel across the holes and I'm shaking it like mad to try and free up some IPA inside and dry it as best I can and you can also just pop a hair dryer on it just to squirt that with some red hot air just to uh, make sure you dry that out as much as you can and once you're happy it's dry like any other print into the curing station and give it a really good cure for a few minutes making sure the outside is cured thoroughly but of course that won't cure the inside so this little gadget i have made from some led lights and on off switch and a battery connector for a nine volt battery and as you can see when you connect the nine volt battery to it and you turn the switch on and voila you get some led lights that you can stick inside your models and cure the inside i'll put a link in the description to where you can get all these little bits and pieces together but it is really really easy to wire it up um, so there's the holes that I made and remember I said I made them nice and big and that's why so I can feed those lights inside they fit right the way through all the way inside the model and they will cure it on the inside it is really important you cure the inside of your model to make sure that any resin that's left inside is hardened as I say you don't want it dripping out you don't want it to be coming out months afterwards you don't want it to be expanding in the summertime and bursting your model and again I've got quite a few little LEDs on there so I can do more than one model at the same time and when I turn it on you will be able to see the LEDs through the actual um, through the actual resin and you can see that it will be curing on the inside the same way your curing station would be curing on the outside and there you go you can see the reflection of the UV lights in there now for these lights because they're not hugely strong lights I would leave them in there for a good five to ten minutes just to make sure everything's uh, cured move them around a little bit push them up to the very edges and, and make sure you get into the nooks and the crannies but um, leave them in there for five to ten minutes and that's the inside of your model then all cured the outside's cured the inside's cured you've saved shed loads of resin uh, it's, it's just fantastic talking about that money you have saved and you can print the rest of your model now and it won't cost you any more than it would have cost you just to build one big bust in the first place and there you have the pros and the cons of hollowing your model so i really hope you've learned something today i hope you found something useful i'd really appreciate to hear your thoughts on on what you've seen today in the comments be they good be they bad how you do it what you would do differently and what other tips you can give me to then pass on to the the rest of the community um, subscribe to the channel really would appreciate it it allows me to carry on doing these things that i really love doing and it helps me share these videos with you we do have a patreon if you want to join the patreon the links are all in the description and we'd really love to have you on board but above all i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today and it won't be too long before hopefully the next greedy 3d video hits youtube see you soon thank you